What is up heroes, it's Manate Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we answered the AB game. We chose to ally, which may very well choose to bite us in the end, and we were about to find the results. I want to say, I was, I was just grabbing a drink of water while I was uh, loading up the game and everything, and the intro was quite spoilery, I think, when you have at least some semblance of what is going on in the game. Like, I think at one point it even shows what the login user ID is for the computer in the, I think it's like the director's office, right? And so, yeah, I was I was not happy to see all of that. But anyways, let's take a look at these results. Were we absolutely bodied by having other people make it to the number nine? Double betray. Ally, ally. Okay. So this is a pretty interesting result, right? Kay and Alice chose to betray against Dio, which honestly is probably an excellent choice. Dio clearly chose to betray, has no regrets, no qualms about trying to kill Alice. And then Lunan Phi chose to ally, with Temyoji choosing ally as well. Lovely. Okay, so all things considered, actually not a bad, not a bad circumstance. We have four people that if they just choose ally in the next one would make it to nine. Unfortunately, Alice is just really far behind. So you chose Ally, huh? Yeah? Quark is sick, a kid and unable to vote. I couldn't bring myself to betray someone like that. Thank you. No need to thank me. I only did what anyone would have. So you guys chose Ally too, huh? Of course. Temyoji had only one BP left, and he was guaranteed to vote Ally. So there's no way we could betray somebody in that position. I mean... Have you talked to Dio? If we had, then he'd... He'd... Yeah, you didn't have much choice. Alice, K, and Dio, on the other hand, seem to have had a less pleasant round. Hey! What the heck is your problem? You're either crazy or just a jerk. Were you trying to kill me? No, nothing like that. Well then, what was it like? If we'd voted ally, I'd... You would be dead. The needles in your bracelet would have activated, killing you. See? That's exactly what I'm talking about. I didn't think there was any way you guys would choose Ally. Not with Alice's BP at once. The only way you could possibly vote was Betray. Picking Ally when I knew you guys would pick Betray would have been suicide. You can't die. You've got six BP. Well, maybe not immediately, no. But I would have been signing my own death warrant. Heck, not just mine. Everyone except K's. What? Didn't you think it through? Your vote was always going to be betrayed. Let's say I was a raving lunatic and picked Ally. What would happen to K's BP? 6 plus 3 would make 9. See? Then it'd be game over. Life over. He'd open the number 9 door and blow this popsicle stand, what a phrase. And that'd leave us twisting in the wind, living out the rest of our miserable lives stuck in this place. You see? 
That's why I chose betraying. I did it to save all our necks, including yours. That's a good argument. Not genuine, but good argument. Alice gritted her teeth and scowled fiercely at Dio, apparently trying to think of a rebuttal, before finally snorting indignantly and stalking away. Shortly thereafter, the warehouse was filled with the rumbling sound of the doors sliding shut. Ambidex Gate of Close, round three is the star round. We kind of know what uh, the rules are for the star round. As many times as we want, huh? Then that means... We can play the AV game as many times as we want. Right? Hey, didn't Zero Jr. say something about this? Good old flashback to Zero Jr. Yeah, he did. Can you guys all show me your bracelets? I want to see what all our colors and groups are this time. Within moments, a series of wrists were extended for me to examine. Alright, K, Luna... Oh, Lu Luna and Temyoji are a pair, aren't they? Interesting. I see. Luna and Clover are a Cyan pair, and Phi and Alice are a Magenta pair. The remaining three are all solos. K is red, Dio is green, and I'm blue. So how are the groups supposed to work for the next round? And I think the next doors are going to be those white ones down in the Floor B warehouse. Yeah, I heard about those. Alice told me about them while we were here waiting for you and Clover. I think I've got them figured out. Yeah, so lay it out for us. How are the groups going to shake out this time? Yeah, I mean, with the white doors, there's only one option, right? Fly not and began to explain. Option A, Temyoji and Quark pair up with me to open one door. Temyoji and Quark paired up with me. Interesting, that would be, that would certainly be an interesting group. And then we'd have Fi and Alice pair up with Dio to open another door. The most, uh, I guess, skeptical members of the group. And then Luna and Clover pair up with K to open the last one. That's also an interesting pair. Or matchup. Oh? Is there only one option? Yes. No other combinations would be able to open the secondary doors. Admittedly, Temyoji and Quark aren't here for us to check, but I'm sure they're the yellow pair. If they weren't, then Sigma would be stuck without anybody he could pair up with. Oh god. I never thought I'd have to put up with Dio again. Well, you just didn't think hard enough then. Sooner or later, everybody puts up with Dio. Wait. Hmm. Yikes. Poor Alice. Really having to, uh... Spend way much, or a lot more time with Dio than anybody would ever, could ever tolerate. So, um, what should we do now? It looks like we have a lot of time until the primary doors open. Yeah, about 80 minutes. I'm worried about Quark's condition. Those pods can't cure Radical Six. He still needs help. Well, we don't have anything to lose, so we might as well look for that medicine. Medicines? <laughs> Accelivir, right? Yeah. What about the rest of you? Oh, I'll help. As will I. Me too. Ugh, fine. I guess I can help. Don't even bother, Dio. We know if you find it, you'll just take it. What about you, Sigma? Of course I'll help. What kind of a jerk wouldn't? Okay, we should split up and search. After some discussion, Dio and Kay were assigned to the pantry, Luna and Alice to the treatment center. 
and Clover find myself to the pressure exchange chamber. Shall we regroup in the floor B warehouse 10 minutes before the doors open? We all nodded. Kay turned to Alice and Luna. You are going to the treatment center, correct? Yes. Then please remember to tell Temyoji where we intend to meet and when. Okay, hopefully they don't find any problems when they go back to the treatment center. You must also remember to bring Quark with you. I am concerned about removing him from the pod, but it can't be helped. Without Quark's bracelet, Sigma and Temyoji will be unable to open the secondary door. Right. Good. Looks like we've got that all straightened out. Let's go. With the final nods and one another, we split up, each team heading in a different direction. I wonder if the pressure exchange chamber will be that different this time around. Because we've been there a couple times now, right? Admittedly, I don't remember exactly if we found anything particularly salient here, but I don't know. So, this is the pressure exchange chamber. No, this is the prep room. There are two levels. The actual pressure exchange chamber is downstairs. How do you know that? Alice told me. She was one of the people who investigated this room. Did you talk to her when you were waiting for us back in the warehouse? Yeah. Well, let's head downstairs then. Good idea. I mean, yeah, not like I'd really expect to find Excelivir anywhere in here, right? Especially after a group has already explored it, uh, you know, presumably better than we're about to explore it now, and has already had access to the safe, which is the best shot at finding something like Excelivir. Regardless. So, this is the real thing. Seems like it. Why do they have something like this here? Well, this is just what Alice told me, but... Apparently, the pressure inside the facility was a lot higher than the pressure outside. That was part of a system designed to keep the virus from getting in. It did mean, however, that we need to go through a decompression process in order to get outside. Remember all those suits along the wall of the prep room? Those keep you from getting infected. We won't even be able to enter the pressure exchange chamber if we don't have them on. I see. Whoa, 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 whoa. Then that newspaper article was right. Unfortunately, that seems pretty likely. So the air out there is teeming with Radical Six. Yeah. Wow, so it's just like almost omnipresent in the air outside in the atmosphere? Something's been bothering me. What is it? Aren't you saying that if we put on those suits, we can go into the pressure exchange chamber and go outside, right? Oh, no, we can't do that. The door beyond the pressure exchange chamber is locked up tight. Darn it. Just one door between us and freedom. Well, if you look at it that way, it's the same as the number 9 door. Okay, yeah, but... Whatever, we need to be focusing on finding that Excelivir. Quark needs it. Yeah, you're right. I'll go look around upstairs. You two take this floor, alright? Got it. Okay. And, I, I mean, we found it in the laboratory, didn't we? 
So, I can't imagine what we're actually going to find here. We looked everywhere we could think of, but turned up nothing. Eventually, I couldn't keep my mouth shut any longer. Hey, what do you think the deal is with this stuff about the world being infested with some crazy virus? A pandemic seems like it would make the news, but I don't remember hearing anything. Wait a minute. You mentioned it, didn't you? Back when Dio was asking questions. We were in the infirmary. It was right after Quark lost it. Have any of you guys heard anything about any sort of viral pandemic? Well, no. But... And then Alice said... I have heard rumors about a virus being used as a bioweapon. Uh-oh. Somebody called Chris Redfield. So what's the rumor she was talking about? I got the feeling you and Alice were talking about the same thing. Clover, what do you know? What are you and Alice anyway? I heard you guys belong to some sort of organization. But what is it? Oh, is this going to be our time to finally learn about Clover's backstory? Clover was quiet for a long time. She bit her thumbnail and looked down at the floor. And then finally she lifted her head and met my eyes. Fine. I think I can trust you. Just don't tell Alice, okay? Oh boy, here we go! Alright. Promise? Promise. Clover nodded and began to talk. I listened with rapt attention, at a complete loss for words. Here is what she said. Oh, I'm so excited. Alice and I are agents of the SOIS, which is under the jurisdiction of the Department of Defense. SOIS stands for Special Office of Internal Security, and we're an elite intelligence division that investigates potentially disruptive or dangerous elements, such as domestic or foreign terrorists, radical political splinter groups, and religious organizations with extreme agendas that could pose a threat to the state or citizenry. Our existence hasn't been made public, so there are only a few people who even know we exist. You're probably wondering how I even got involved in something like that, huh? Well, it started when I met Alice. I told you that I've played the Nonary game twice before, right? Well, this was after the second time. So, about a year ago. About a year ago. Okay. We just escaped and we were all stuffed in this SUV barreling across the desert. I was driving. And that's when I saw her. Alice. She was standing next to the road with her thumb out. She was already working for the SOIS, and she'd been on her way to the building we'd been trapped in as part of her investigation. Oh, interesting. So Alice wasn't even, or all ice, wasn't even somewhere in the ship that we were exploring in 999 like I thought. Instead, she had actually just been already outside and on her way there. What's with the garb though, right? <laughs> but on the way there, her car had broken down. We offered to give her a ride, of course. After she got in, we started talking and it turned out that Alice had gotten a tip that the terrorist she was after we're in the building we'd been trapped in. We couldn't see how us playing the Nonary game had anything to do with the terrorists. But Alice had a suggestion. Maybe the two people who trapped you in there are the terrorists. That didn't seem very likely to us, but we were chasing after them anyway, so we decided to bring Alice with us. Unfortunately, we didn't find them. As far as we know, they're still out there now, on the run. That was technically like future Akane, right? Who was zero in 999, right? Anyway, we were taken back to SOIS headquarters and put into custody. I guess they thought there had to be some kind of connection between us being kidnapped and the terrorist group they were investigating. But they must not have found anything, because after a few days of questioning, they let us go. We all went home and returned to our lives. But things didn't go back to the way they'd been. My mom got real worried about me and my brother, since we'd gotten kidnapped twice now, so she hired bodyguards for us. Oh, I haven't told you about my brother, have I? He's super awesome for one. And he was in both of the last two Nonary games, too. 
So anyway, we've been grabbed twice. But the people behind the two Nonary games were totally different. That didn't matter to my mom though, so after that, all these huge men in black suits followed me and my brother everywhere. It was awful. We were always being watched. People would look at us funny because we were being followed around by a bunch of creepy looking guys. I couldn't stand it. Just when I thought I'd finally be free, all that was waiting for me was another kind of prison. The only time I was really happy was when I was hanging out with my brother. So we were talking it over one day and we decided to leave. Like, run away. So we did it. After that we lived on our own. I worked in a cafe and he composed music. He plays the harp and he started writing this kind of new agey music. They got kind of popular so we didn't have to worry too much about surviving. Sometimes he'd play at little venues like coffee houses and stuff and his fans would show up and listen to him play and cry. Or some of them would meet on their own and recite stuff from the book he'd written and play his songs. I know that sounds kind of like weird and culty, but they just do that stuff on their own, okay? My brother doesn't have anything to do with it. Anyway, we did that for a while, and then one day Alice showed up. And then here's where, you know, Clover's life takes a turn. I'm curious to see how long she was in the organization prior to coming to this notary game, right? I need your help, she told us. We need people who can do what you can do. So we went to the location she gave us, and it turned out to be the headquarters of the SOIS, where they'd taken us after the second Nonary game. They put us in a room with about a dozen or so other people who were all about the same age as us. A bunch of them looked familiar, too. It only took a moment to realize how we knew each other. They were the kids from the first Nonary game. We were all excited to see each other again, and then we were hugging and shaking hands and stuff, and then Alice walked in. The whole room went quiet. She walked up to the podium and looked around the room, making eye contact with each one of us. Right now, a terrorist organization is preparing for a major attack. They plan to trigger a viral pandemic. If they succeed, they will strike a massive blow against all of humanity, not just any one country. It's possible that we, as a species, will die out completely. We are doing our best to prevent this, but we need your help. You are what we call espers. You have the ability to access the morphogenetic field. We need that. I'm guessing you don't know what any of that is, but basically we can do this thing that's kind of like telepathy. I mean, it isn't really telepathy, but that's probably the closest thing, okay? Espers can resonate their consciousness with another person through this thing called the morphogenetic field. The purpose of the first Nonary game was to research that ability. So they kidnapped kids, who had the potential to do it, and threw them into the game. Alice had gathered up all the kids from that experiment. Well, I mean, it had been nine years since it happened. So we weren't really kids anymore. Anyway, everybody she'd brought in was an Esper. That included me and my brother, of course. I bet you think I'm just making all this up, huh? I don't blame you. It is pretty crazy. I mean, I was even starting to forget I could do that stuff. So when I heard Alice's story, I was like, screw that. I was trying to move on with my life, and now some shady government creeps wanted me to use some weird ability I had for them? No way. I wasn't even sure I could do it anymore. Some of the others felt differently, though, and they told Alice they'd do it. It was a job, after all, and most people wouldn't turn down a salary like that. Oh right, I forgot to tell you, she told us how much they'd pay us if we helped. It was a lot. More wealth than you can imagine. But I was still totally against doing it. My brother told me he'd go along with whatever I decided, so I decided we were leaving. A couple days passed, and then Alice showed up at our apartment. She didn't waste time. The people behind the first Nonary game might have been part of the terrorist organization Alice and the SOIS were after. Wasn't that, she asked, something that I might want to know more about? That got me curious. My brother, too. But the clincher was what Seven said to us. He was one of the guys that got abducted with us for the second Nonary game. Seven, ah, great character. 
She called him on her phone right then and there and handed it to us. You guys are the only people who can do this. We don't know where Junpei is. He's gone off to travel the world looking for Akane. I haven't been able to get a hold of him. Interesting. Is Tenyoji Junpei? It's very possible, right? It's not completely outside the realm of possibility. Please, just do me a favor and help Alice out. <laughs> and then we've got the lovely little asterisk. Junpei is, like Seven, another participant from the second Nonary game. Akane, one of the people behind the second Nonary game. And also a participant, right? Seven was a Japanese policeman, which was probably how Alice got in touch with him. Anyway, that did it. My brother and I agreed to join the SOIS. For the next couple months, all we did was train. Half of the time it was general knowledge and technical skills an SOIS agent needed, and the other half was learning to strengthen our Esper abilities. They'd actually known about Espers for quite some time, and had a lot of techniques that helped us get better and stronger. After several months of hard work, we were finally ready for our first field missions. Mine was an infiltration. My brother stayed at the base, so I could relay information back through him. I was supposed to sneak into a research facility, posing as one of their workers, and then use the morphogenetic field to transmit what I found back to my brother. But... Everything went wrong. Wow, look at that picture of Clover too. Almost unrecognizable. It was a trap. The whole research facility was fake, and I got captured. Alice had to come and rescue me. I had been sending information about the inside of the facility to my brother, and Alice used that information to come and find me. As soon as she got there, she picked me up and carried me out. I was relieved and happy to be alive and free, but I also felt ashamed and miserable. While she was carrying me back out, I started to cry. She was just so cool, and I wasn't. I wanted to be just like her. So from that day onward, I did everything I could to be more like Alice. Aw, that's sweet. Our infiltration ended in failure, but we did manage to get something useful. In fact, we were able to figure out where their headquarters was. The directors decided that December 25th, 2028 would be the day we would strike. This time, I promised myself we wouldn't screw it up. I was finally going to get some answers about something that had been with me for most of my life. But then, on December 22nd, three days before the raid, Alice and I were attacked by people in gas masks while we were going over our plans. Interesting. Notably, people in gas masks. This means to say that each person, you know, each zero, uh, that abducted the other participants could have been a different person, right? And the people behind this notary game are also likely uh, some collaborative, you know, organization. Of a group of people, not just, you know, an individual who's set on, you know, reliving the notary game, right? And when you woke up, you were in the warehouse. Yeah. Wow, so that's some really helpful information about Clover and Alice's background, right? All of that talking seemed to have tired Clover out. She sighed, and her long hair swayed as she moved. Hey, uh, I've got a few questions. What are they? Well, first off, your, uh, powers, I guess. I'm guessing you can't use them right now? Yeah. I'm not really sure why. I've been sending my brother messages ever since I woke up, but... No response? Yeah. If there was another Esper here, they could make me stronger, but that's just wishful thinking. Wait. What? Well, if there's someone else who's stronger than me, then they kind of absorb my powers. Maybe... Maybe there's another Esper here who's intentionally absorbing whatever Clover's sending out. No, never mind, that's probably not it. 
Never know. Right, whatever. I have some other questions, so... Moving on. I think I understand what Alice was talking about now. They were trying to spread that virus, right? Yeah. Okay. So who are they? Well... I can't tell you that. What? Why not? After telling everything else so far, it is pretty shocking to be like, yeah, well, I actually can't tell you what the name of the terrorist group is. You told me all that other stuff, but this is too much? Well, Alice would be mad at me. I already told you I wouldn't tell her. But... Fine. Let me rephrase. When are they going to do it? Well, if we knew that, we wouldn't have gone to all that trouble. So you don't know? No. All we know is soon. But that could mean just about anything. Yeah? It could be next week, or next month, or even next year. Or it could have happened already. Wait. You mean they might have already released the virus? Wouldn't that make the most sense? Like, how about this room? Or that newspaper article. And... The three people who were put in cold sleep, let alone the, the computer that recognizes Radical 6 as a diagnosis, but not a treatment, right? Are you saying you, me, and Alice were frozen and the pandemic happened while we were on ice? It's very possible, right? Wait. No, that doesn't make sense. Nobody else has heard of Radical 6 either. Maybe they're lying. Really? All six of them? I mean, given that Temyoji and Quark lived in this sort of post-apocalyptic world, right? I think they would have heard of it. Dio, we know, has heard of it because he's from the outside world. Um, we don't know, K, K doesn't know, potentially, uh, if he even knows about it or not. And Luna likely knows about it, right? She knew about like the treatment and the, the machines that other people weren't aware of, so I, I would be... I would be surprised if she was from, you know, the same time period as Alice, Clover, and Sigma. And then lastly, there's, there's Phi. Nobody knows what's going on with Phi. Well, if K really does have memory loss, then it's only five. Quark is out too. So you're saying Temyoji, Dio, Phi, and Luna are all lying? Hmm. I guess they are a little suspicious, right? And what's their motive? For lying? How would I know? Then what's the motive for a terrorist organization to start a pandemic? I heard it was something about purifying the unclean. <laughs> Isn't it always with terrorists? Purifying the unclean? Oh. Oh! Unclean. 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 What? What are you doing? Shut up. Just hold on a minute. I'm this close to remembering. Unclean. Clean. Een. Een. Een? She leapt up, suddenly excited. Neostigmine! Neo what? Uh, did you forget it already? I'm talking about this stuff. As she spoke, she pulled something out of her pocket. It was the injection gun, complete with a vial of medication. Oh right, I remember that. It was in the safe in the treatment center, right? Yeah. I didn't have any idea what it was, though, so I gave it to you. Exactly. Are you saying you've heard about this neostigmine stuff before? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, I just remembered. You remembered? Why would Clover know about neostigmine? 
My brother told me about that. Neostigmine is a type of cholinesterase inhibitor. That means it's sort of an antidote for tubocurarine. Yep. Um, sorry, but I still don't get it. How easy do I have to make it? Okay. And so then this is the information. Oops, sorry about that. That was my chair. But then, listen to this music. I love it. It's like total breakthrough. Like big, big advances are being made in the story at the moment. That's the information we need in order to save Sigma in the timeline where he's been drugged with Soporel Beta, right? Or the, the tuba curie. <sighs> okay, fine. I'll start at the top, alright? The stuff I've got in here is neostigmine, which counteracts the muscle relaxant tubocurarine. Following me? Tubocurarine is the poison in our bracelets, right? Right. It's the second thing we get injected with if we're penalized. So you're saying this neostigmine <clears throat> keeps it from working? Yes! Oh my god, how many times are you going to make me say it? <laughs> so we can just inject ourselves with this if we get penalized. Yeah. We don't have to die. Very exciting. Another follow-up question though is how many doses do we have? We're gonna be okay. And there's the answer. We can only pull the trigger once though. That means we can only use it on one person. Yeah. Well, it's still good news. This means one of us can break the rules once. Like, let's see. The best way to use it would be for sneaking through the number 9 door. If somebody gets 9 points, they can open it, right? With this stuff, somebody who doesn't have 9 points could still leave with them. Hmm. Anyway, I'm gonna go tell Alice. What? Hey! Clover, wait! Clover! Uh-oh. It was too late. As soon as this information gets out, it could be fairly problematic, right? Who has the neostigmine could be a big contention point. It could lead to some conflict. And then, of course, all of the possibilities of who can use it, right? Somebody might just haphazardly assume that if they put themselves in a situation, the others would be compelled to use it on them, even if they had plans to use it in another manner. So I don't like that, you know, she's immediately going to go tell this, give this information away. Clover was already on the lift and gone. Darn. I was, I think understandably, upset. With no stairs, my only choice was to wait for the lift to come back down. As soon as it was back, I jumped on and headed upstairs. Fi! Where did Clover go? Why does she look so exhausted? Fi, can you hear me? She didn't say anything, just stared at me with her mouth half open. Her eyes seemed slightly glazed, and her body was unnaturally stiff. Uh, Fi? I grabbed a shoulder and shook her gently. Slowly she raised her arm, fingers drooping limply from it. She gestured toward the exit that led away from the warehouse. That way? She went out that door? Fi's only answer was a slow, shallow nod. Right, got it. Thanks. I headed for the exit, then paused. You look pretty tired. Get some rest, alright? Still no response. There was something odd about her, but catching Clover seemed like more of a priority. I turned back around and jogged out the door, toward the treatment center. Uh oh, I've got an uneasy feeling about this, guys. I do not like where this is going. What happened to Fi? What happened to Fi that has her so... I guess, like... I don't know. Just incapacitated, right? 
She's unable to speak? She's all drowsy and slow? What could have done that to her? Was it from Clover on her way out? I don't know. This music is not reassuring, guys. Huh? This is weird. Where is everybody? I'd assumed Alice would be in the treatment center, so Clover would have gone there to find her, but... The room was empty. No Temyoji, no Luna, no... What? Luna and Temyoji were gone too. They left Quark, and the readout on his pod said his vital signs were still normal. As far as I could tell, he was still asleep. Fine. Guess it's time to go look somewhere else. I made my way out of the treatment center. Uh-oh. Uh-oh indeed, I do not like where this is going. When we find everybody, I'm sure somebody's gonna be dead. At least somebody's gonna be dead. Where are they though? Are they in the lounge? They're not in any of the rooms we said we were going to explore. They're not in the lounge. They're probably in the crew quarters, because we know that's where everything goes down in this game, right? The crew quarters. None of the AV doors are open. And they would announce if a game had started. Obviously, we wouldn't be able to start it until we get to the next game, right? Or get through the next escape room. What the heck? What is going on here? I can't find anybody. Every single room is empty. Wait. There's still one place I haven't checked. The infirmary. Gonna channel our inner corpse party. Everything bad happens in the infirmary. So far it's been the crew quarters in this game, but... Sure enough, it's finally the infirmary's time to shine. Here we go, guys. I hope you're ready. Oh no. Oh no, you can already see the visual waviness effect. This is not gonna be good. I ran to the room and stopped short. I might as well have run into a brick wall. My chest tightened so much I could barely breathe. No, what, what happened? I felt my whole body convulse. Whether from terror or nausea, I couldn't tell. My legs went limp and I crumpled to the floor. Some sort of gas? Something sticky pressed against the palm of my hand, and I looked down to see blood. A vast, warm pool of fresh blood, stretching out across the room, lapping at my legs and hands. Why? This can't be real. How could... What? It's a straight-up bloodbath! In the middle of the lake of blood, like an island of flesh, were bodies, and it's everybody but Kay. And Quark. Temyoji's dead, Phi is dead, Luna's dead, Alice, Clover, even Dio. What? It, only Kay and Quark are alive, right? And ourselves. They were a bloody tangle of lifeless limbs and dead eyes, with too much blood and chaos for me to tell who was who. What in the world happened? Had they sliced themselves open, or stabbed one another? I couldn't tell. All the blood. Too much blood. Whatever they'd done, it was clear what tool they'd used to do it. A scalpel lay in the blood next to them, its handle and blade streaked with gore. This was how they had died. This tiny blade. I'll take it this isn't a good ending. <laughs> oh god, this is it. It's all over. This is how it ends. That's right. I have to end it. This nightmare will finally be over. Time to wake up. No, wait, what? My finger scraped across the floor as I picked up the scalpel. I lifted it slowly, carefully to my neck as if someone were guiding my hand with theirs. Has he been infected with Radical Six? We know it causes that sort of suicidality, but this would have been a very uh, acute onset. I, although, that is what happened with Quark and Alice, right? And drew it across my throat. 
What? What? And now we're getting theme music and everything? We're gonna get some credits? Wow, so that was certainly a turn of events. That was, that was cool. Um, we learn about Clover and Alice. We finally are told about the role of Neostigmine, right? It can be used to cheat death once at the hands of Tuba Curarine. And then, and then what, right? We wake up, or we get upstairs, literally just, you know, minutes after Clover heads up, and Phi is already all weary and everything, it seems like everybody had been drugged at some point, right? Or maybe what we were seeing was the visual effects of, or how other people are perceived when they are infected with Radical Six. That cognitive slowing, right? Given that Sigma, almost like on a whim, decided he wanted to kill himself, I, I wish I knew if it was related to Radical Six or not. I'm tempted to think it is, given everybody else was dead. The question to me, though, is is where were Kay and Quark? Well, actually, we know where Quark was. He was in the, the treatment center. The only person we don't know where they are in that timeline at that time is Kay. Right? Where could Kay have gone? Why wasn't he affected by Radical Six? Is it the suit he's wearing? Right? Or if it was some sort of gas that was released, why was it only happening in the uh, the infirmary, right? What was it about the infirmary that led to everybody doing that? I don't know, especially after having found the Neostigmine. There was so much, you know, promising ahead. Wow. Either way, I mean, obviously some very, very helpful information for other timelines. And at this point, we're just going to be bouncing around from lock to lock, right? I think we have a vast majority of the information available to us. So, huh. Well, that was that was a neat timeline for sure. Yeah, we definitely learned a lot. So, as always, I'm looking forward to, to other timelines. I'm curious to see what locks have unlocked at this point. We know about the Neostigmine, so I'm sure we've unlocked some of the locks related to that. We know about the journal, which unlocked one of the timelines previously before we started this one. And I'm sure things are going to start to unravel at an increasingly fast pace. And I'm very much looking forward to the end game as things start to unravel and, and the story gets tied together. Each character's background, who's who, how they're connected, is starting to come together and it's been exciting. I do think learning about the backstories of the characters has probably been one of my favorite parts so far. And I know that so much of it is up ahead. But let's take a look at this flow sheet. This was the Clover end. Interesting. Well, I mean, we did learn about her backstory, so I guess it's not surprising it's called the Clover end, but wow. All right, so that's the second time we filled up all 10 pages of save files. <laughs> Lovely. But so we have the Dio, Temyoji, and Clover ends now. Look at the timeline. So we've unlocked this one over here. How can Fine K be saved after we chose Betray? How can Fine K be saved? I don't even remember what happened to Fine K, but presumably it's the Neostigmine, right? We have that. I think the next thing we'll do is explore this end. If we choose Betray, that's probably a bad end because it seems to be paired where there's one good end and then there's you know a bad end paired on that timeline. So we have that lock undone. We have this lock, which is where we don't have enough Excelivir. We know where to find it. And then we have this one. How do we stop Phi? Huh. <clears throat> I don't remember exactly how we stopped her. Oh, no, we convinced her. But this one was still locked. So actually, much to my surprise, we only have two locks available. That's actually really surprising. So I guess in the next episode, or rather, <clears throat> in the next episode... <laughs> We'll see what happens if we choose Betray here, and then we'll explore this lock here. And I hope you guys are looking forward to just as much as I am. This was this was an excellent episode, and it has me very excited for the future. But until the next episode, this is Mim Night Zero, and this mission is complete.